Healthcare workers and researchers are working tirelessly to understand the clinical characteristics of COVID-19. In this update, we'll review what we know about the clinical characteristics of SARS-CoV-2 from several large-scale studies. These articles provide insight on the severity, age distribution, risk factors, and case fatality rates of COVID-19. Let's start with describing the severity of COVID-19. The best estimates today come from a study of over 72,000 COVID-19 cases in Wuhan, China. This study showed that 81% of people with COVID-19 have mild disease. People with mild disease may have mild pneumonia or no symptoms of pneumonia. They are typically treated at home and the infection resolves with or without supportive care to treat fever, cough, or other symptoms as needed. 14% have severe disease, with breathing problems, oxygenation problems, and radiological findings consistent with pneumonia. These people will likely be hospitalized. They usually present with breathing problems including dyspnea with a respiratory rate of 30 or more breaths per minute. Problems with oxygenation include blood oxygen saturations of 93% or lower, or a PF ratio of less than 300. On CT, doctors may find lung infiltrates, including ground glass opacities and consolidations, occupying greater than 50% of the person's lung fields. And finally, 5% of patients are classified as critical. With respiratory failure, septic shock, or multiple organ dysfunction or failure, These patients need to be accepted to the ICU and are frequently intubated. As the virus continues to spread to a range of populations with different demographics and characteristics, we now have a better idea of who is at risk of getting infected with COVID-19 and developing severe or critical disease. Researchers in Iceland studied the likelihood of testing positive for COVID-19 in a high-risk population. This population included people who were already symptomatic but did not require hospitalization, people who had recently traveled to a high-risk area, or were in contact with a person who tested positive for COVID-19. The researchers noted that within this high-risk group, men were more likely to test positive than women, and children had lower rates of testing positive as well. Although the chances of children testing positive for COVID-19 in this high-risk population was lower than that of adults, the researchers still noted that among the patients under 20 years old, more males tested positive than females and the chance of being infected increased linearly as the children got older. It is still unclear whether the lower incidence of positive results between males and females and between children and adults is from less exposure or a biological resistance to the virus. Certain risk factors put people at risk of dying from COVID-19. Various pre-existing medical conditions have been associated with increased risk of poor COVID-19 outcomes. A very large study of over 17 million NHS patients reported data on risk factors for death from COVID-19 among adults. Obesity was associated with a 57% increased chance of dying from COVID-19. When adjusted for confounding factors, the increased risk was 27%. High blood pressure seems to be a risk factor for dying from COVID-19. In the unadjusted analyses, high blood pressure showed a 22% increased risk of dying from COVID-19. However, when the researchers adjusted the results to account for other confounding factors, the results were no longer significant. People with chronic respiratory disease had a 135% increased risk of dying from COVID-19, and when adjusting for other confounding factors, the increased risk was 78%. Patients with cardiovascular disease had a 101% increased risk of dying from COVID-19, and when adjusted for confounders, there was a 27% increased risk of dying. Uncontrolled diabetes showed an increased risk of 261%, and when adjusted, the risk was 136% increased. 
If a person was diagnosed with cancer less than one year from contracting COVID-19, their risk of dying from the infection was 83% increased in the unadjusted analyses and dropped to 56% increased when adjusted for confounders. If the patient was diagnosed with cancer five or more years ago, the risk of dying from COVID-19 was no longer significantly different from people without cancer. Hematological cancers also increased a person's risk of dying from COVID-19. The increased risks decreased if the hematological malignancy was diagnosed over one year ago but remained significant even if the person was diagnosed five or more years ago. People with liver disease, stroke, neurological disorders, kidney disease, organ transplants, and other immunosuppressive conditions also had higher risks of dying from COVID-19. The researchers also reported risk factors for dying from COVID-19 across different ethnicities. People from Asian groups had a 95% increased risk of dying from COVID-19. When adjusting for confounding factors, the increased risk decreased to 62%. Black people also had higher risks of dying from COVID-19 with an unadjusted increased risk of 117% and an adjusted risk increase of 71%. If you want to learn more about confounding factors and how to adjust for them, I suggest you check out our Epidemiology Essentials course. People in these categories must be monitored closely if they develop mild symptoms as they are at a higher risk of progression to a more severe case. Some people may have more than one risk factor, which can increase their susceptibility to catching SARS-CoV-2 and developing severe disease even further. Ultimately, we need to know what is the case fatality rate of our COVID-19 patients. Case fatality rates between countries may differ as testing policies and thresholds for hospitalization vary. Also, demographics, smoking rates, and the prevalence of comorbidities impact case fatality rates. These factors vary from country to country. In a study of 2,634 patients hospitalized with COVID-19 in the New York City area between March 1st and April 4th, 2020, the hospitalized mortality rate was 21%. Of those patients who died from COVID-19, about 24% were between 18 and 65 years old. The remaining 76% were all aged over 65 years. The case fatality rate for those who received mechanical ventilation in the 18 to 65-year-old age group was 76%. Among patients over 65 years old who required mechanical ventilation, 97% died. For those requiring ICU care, 64% of patients aged 18 to 65 years died, and 91% of patients over 65 years old died. The study conducted in New York hospitals did not report any deaths under 18 years old. However, severe illness in children is significant, albeit less frequent than in adults. Researchers reported the characteristics and outcomes of children with COVID-19 who were admitted to U.S. and Canadian pediatric intensive care units. Researchers collected data from 46 pediatric hospitals, but only 35% of those hospitals reported any COVID-19 cases. In total, 48 children were admitted to the ICU and 38% of them required mechanical ventilation. 4% of the children admitted to the hospital ICU in this study died. This study highlights better hospital outcomes for pediatric patients infected with SARS-CoV-2 since the ICU mortality rates are lower compared to that of adults and less patients are admitted to the ICU overall. Further studies may provide additional insights on the clinical characteristics of COVID-19 which can help public health officials design effective strategies to control its spread and aid clinicians in managing the health consequences of this disease. That's it for now. If you want to improve your understanding of COVID-19, make sure to register for a free MIT Mastery trial account and check out our CME accredited courses. So stay safe and see you next time.